is called the past, Lord. So we ask, dear Father, that you will bring strength and comfort to the family, to the family and friends and all his loved ones, Lord, as they take part in doing his last rites, dear God. As we lay this body to rest, Father, we will know with acknowledgement that his soul is with you, that his soul is at peace, that you have him in paradise at your right hand, dear God. So I pray, Lord, that you will strengthen his family, especially Sister Cindy right now, dear God, with peace, with strength, with comfort, Lord, and we lay all these proceedings that have to take place into your hands, Lord. We pray that you, Father, are not a God of a confusion, so we know that everything is in your plan and that you will make everything to glorify and honor you that will be done today, dear Father. We pray, Lord, that everything that is done will be also pleasing to his soul. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Discouraged. 
A Victoria não tem que ter um tempo com você. A Victoria não tem que ter um tempo com você. Ela tem que ter um tempo com você. Ela tem que ter um tempo com você. Wango, the Wango. Everywhere I go, you want to go. <laughs> you want to go.
you take care of yourself while you're going, right? You're going to reach your family up here now. All those people you talk all night with in your language. You're going to meet them now. You go see and be good, okay? And just don't come and frighten me. Let me get scared. You give me all the power. Okay? You give me good power, strength, so I can go on, okay? Okay. Come to help me to bring you home now, okay? You want to go home now? You want to see Gucci and Jesse too now? All right, come, we're going to go. Come. Come, tie your way to your house too. Come. Okay. Yeah, we are going now. We are leaving, okay? Okay, come. Oh, the camera come in. Okay, you can stay. Okay, you can stay. 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 You can stay.
Good morning again to each one of us. And I just want to say welcome as we commence the day, this part of the day, into the Lord's hand. We thank God that we have reached this far to pay respect. Last respect for our dear brother, father, grandfather, and every part of relationship he has in this this part of life. Today we will see the last presence in person upon the face of the earth. All the rice that we have to do will be finished for today. But we know that he lives in our heart. He will remain in our heart for every day. This personality is a blessed personality. And whatever he has done here on earth, 
always will be treasured in the hearts of his loved ones. No matter where they go and what they do, he will always be remembered. And I thank God to get to know him and his beloved wife, his daughter, his son-in-law, and the entire family. I know it's a painful moment, but the Word of God said, Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. It isn't something nice to do, but it's something must be done. And we all have to travel through this part of life. Those that left behind carry the pain. But we not forgetting our Almighty God gives us peace and strength that we can go through. And we thank God for knowing Him. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, Lord, we come before your throne of grace this morning, asking you, O oh God, to revive us. Revive our spirit, Lord, as we do the last rites for our loved, beloved brother, for our beloved father, for our beloved husband, for the more beloved grandfather. And in every way we go, Lord, we ask you to take the step before us, Lord. Lead and direct us. We commence this day into your hand, O oh God. And whatever is to be said and done, O oh God, will bring glory, honor to your name because you have accepted your son back into your arms. And you have cherished, you will cherish him as he prays and worship you, O oh God. Thank you for his soul that find a resting place in your care. And that you, O oh God, will surround his family with the arms of comfort and love. As they travel through this journey of grief and mourning, O oh God, we call upon you, O oh God, to surround them with your presence. Saturate them, O oh God, with the comfort that comes from above and the peace that will overshadow them, Lord, that they will able, O oh God, to stand, O oh God, to do what is, has to be done today. We thank you, God, that whatever will be done, will be always remembered and give you praise and glory in everything. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. If you have a book, we will turn to number two. <clears throat> what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs should bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Lord in 
Number six, he's a good, good father. Oh, I heard thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night to tell me that you're pleased and that I never is at the top of that. And he has traveled through life's journey here on earth. And as he go along, we could all, everyone around him, could say something good about him. It's sad to know that he lived, but it's time. God said there's a time for everything. There's a time for every season. There's a time for rain, there's a time for sun. There's a time, a moment for every minute of the day. Today, his time has come to go away from the existence of this world. He's traveled through this world with joy. All the happiness his life could have bring. And in between that, he had a lot of sorrows, a lot of pain. And in every, year, every decade we could say, or in every year we could say, there's always a change of moment. 
And when we think about it, our life goes on when we were a baby, the way we grew up, the way we were with our siblings, the way we were going up at school, and all these are different, different periods in our lives. Today, he has come to the last page of his book here at work. And today we could say goodbye to our dear loved one. As they perform the rites in everything that they do, we will never see this person again in a body like this. But his image lives in our heart. And the things that he have done lives in our heart. And we will travel on with that to remember this character. And I just want to sing one more song. It has the goodness of that. No have the goodness of that. Okay. Uh, Sister Cindy, you want us to sing a song? Which song you want us to sing? Pass me not. Eh? Number three. Number three. Okay, number three. Pass me not, my gentle savior. It's a beautiful song. A true it all. We always know there's a spiritual being beside us, and that is from above. And that is the one that steers us and directs our path. And that is our gentle savior. Ask me not a gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while another thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, save Do not pass me 
and someone that loves you. And that is the one that strengthens us when our feet get feeble and it's going down. Suddenly we get strength and we stand. It comes from above, loved ones. It makes us strong. In our weakness, we prove that God strengthens us. And that is what is going to happen today for all of us that are grieving and we find our body is getting numb and we cannot stand anymore. We will be strengthened by our Almighty God. All the power and all the sustenance come from above. We are here to accept it, receive it, and tell him thank you and be blessed with what he has in store for us. Our brother here has passed it to all. His soul is in the hands of the Lord. Only the corpse is lying here. But the word of God said, this what he has blessed us with, what we have to care of for so a long time, before we reach here, we have to go back to where it comes from. The word of God said, from ash to ash, from door to door, there we return. And today, this is what is going to happen. He will go back from what God have took and created him. His soul is in the hands of God, and that we thank God, he has lived a life full of good deeds, a life that share his love, and we all have enjoyed it. So we say, thank God that we have known him, and we bless him wherever his soul finds rest and peace in the hands of God. Is there one, anyone in our midst here want to say something? You have the time now. We have to leave just now to go. And before we go, who haven't seen the body could view the body now. And, or if you have a word of encouragement or a word you want to express here before you leave, you can do it now. We don't have time to wait, but if... Get the push the the push the push the 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 push the 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 before you close the class, let yeah. us offer a word of prayer. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. You hold on. But later we can do that.
Have a good choice, just maybe. Okay, let's yeah. pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come again before you. Thanking you, O oh God, that this part of our service has come to a close. And as we travel to go to the church, O oh God, we pray, God, that you direct our steps, O oh Father. Keep us safe, O oh God, and in the unity of one spirit. As we lay our brother, O oh God, the last journey of his way back, I pray, God, that you be with each one of us. Strengthen us, O oh God. Comfort us, O oh Father. Even if Cindy, O oh God, I pray for her, O oh Father. You will double up her strength, O oh God. And let her, O oh God, to be that brave and strong person that you usually be. I pray, God, and I cover her under your protection. And even all the loved ones, the daughters, the son-in-law, the grandchildren, O oh God. And every person that connected to this scarf, O oh God. I pray, Father, that you strengthen their inner being, O oh Father. That you will give them, O oh God, the comfort of their life. That they will be able to stand, O oh God, with an energy that comes from you. And they will find peace in their heart for doing this last journey, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. In a mighty name, as we leave here, Guide us and protect us on our on our journey, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody want to take a last look here? Come see me. Okay. Okay. Any cookies? We have no cookies no more for you, okay? There is no more cookies, all right? They're crying already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, man. You see? Say bye. Say bye. Tell them no cookies no more in the morning. Uh -huh. And I tell no cookies. Okay. Go. 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 I see you. Go. Oh, just another cookie. Would you look? Let me see. Come, Gucci. Come, come. Gucci, come. Gucci. Hey. Gucci. Gucci, man. Expensive. Watch, watch. Look, look there. Look, you see? You can see. Look, look, look. Okay, look. You see? You see? Okay, okay. 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 then you don't see. Okay, go now. Come, come, come. 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 Come, come, Shall we close? Yeah. Okay.
told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be him also. In John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, we read, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whosoever lives by believing in me will never experience ritual death. Let's go. Perfect delight. 
Meanwhile, we groan longing to be closed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are closed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and work because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we, always, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and will prefer to be away from the body at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him. Whether we are at home in the body or away from it, we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due for due us for the things done in the body, whether good or bad. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Randy. I will now call upon the worship team. They will lead us into worship.
his holy name. This morning we honor and celebrate the life of Brother Ashtamani. Amazing grace comes to the sun.
family member who wants to pay tribute to our dear Brother Ashwani. Changing all the clock, making sure all the time is correct, all the grandfather clocks went off at the right time. It's I have very, very good memories of Lana. When he got sick, you know, the first time he got sick in '97 or '98, I can't remember exactly when it was. We came my, myself and I think it was the last year after Chad was here with Lisa. They had before they went away. I remember going to see him at Slant Hospital. He was sick and it really tore me apart. Then he stopped working. And that was a two brush shot. Then finally used to stay over by him. Then everyone used to come and take care of him. Nana was a very lovable person. As much as he was strict, he never when you, you go out, you gotta come back on time. He cared. He was a very caring person. As for anyone you can talk to, he was as much as he was strict, strict, he cared for you, he loved you. My family can attest drama. When Maya got sick, he took care of her. He ensured that she came to Suriname and got treated with anti-Sindhi. Grandma, Auntie Mon, my mom, Mamu, Pobrit Mamu, he, they all know Nana. 
Nana was always there for us. I, I was a little boy, but when we were building our house, I remember one time, he lent daddy money. The money came to care plan and Regent Street. Grandma went to him to collect the money. For just because we wanted to build our own house. He was a giving person, a loving person. Like I said, the last part of his life, as much as he was sick, in bed, on crutches, he still got up, shaved, and sure, at first he do the morning, brush his teeth and shave, get dressed, sit down and eat. I remember one thing, when we were over at Tubro Strand, this is long ago, came home, sat down before six, eat. And he would cook for him roti and some curry. He sit down and he eat on the chair, watch TV, the news. And then when the latter part, always got his series up to date. And one time when I see he was sick, I took the first time I ever took one month of leave, I came to Sarnap to stay with him and Auntie was a city he was sick. And we watched every single series. I cooked for him. And sure he was fed. Nana, on behalf of myself, Mark, Sion, Grace, Mommy and Daddy. Daddy and Nana share the same birthday. So we always ensure we call on the same day, November 20th. They cannot, could not have been here today. Nana, you are loved, you will be loved, you will be surely miss. My three-year-old son came yesterday. The first thing he did when he walked in the house was ask where was Nana. When we were here in July, we saw Nana. The last time they saw him alive. My two brothers didn't see Nana for 13, 14 years. We were here in August, school incident for our church trip. We had sure we saw Nana. We will miss you to the family at the city, the children, the grandchildren. No, Nana was a very, I, I can sh surely can attest, Nana was a loving man. As much as he was strict, he loved everyone unconditionally. The Bible says to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. Nana, the last time I spoke at this church, I remember clearly I came to church with Nana. And this city was away again. Was this month when I was here, the last time I spoke here at this church was with Nana. He ensured we came to church on time, he got his offering, he got his envelope, and we came to church. Saturday, midway, everyone loved him. You will be missed. Auntie Cindy, know that we love you very much. The family, we love you guys. Thank you. And so we keep learning more and more about Brother Ashwani, how loving and kind he was. Amen? And he, not, he did not only do that in church, but as you could see, he did it with his family, he did it with friends and neighbors. This few days we keep hearing how great a man he was. Now we will have a special song by Brother Jeremy. Good afternoon, church. My song is entitled, Goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of 
the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like the water. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I will in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made of, oh, I will say of the goodness your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid out, I surrender now. I'll give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after me and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am made oh I will say of the goodness And they got married. 
Their first child was a girl, born in 1953. Her name was Jolie. And then they had a second girl, born in 1955. Her name is Minu. She's sitting right here. And that's my mom. In 1956, he was offered a job in Nigeria, Africa. He left his wife and two daughters for three years. And during that time, my nanny shifted to Mumbai in 1959. He came back from Africa to Mumbai for a few years. And in 1960, he had a boy named Raju, and then a girl in 1963 named Kavita. So he had three girls and one boy. In 1963, he got another offer to go to the Caribbean to work at Kerbalan. At the time, he was working in Trinidad and Tobago. He worked there for a year and then was transferred to Suriname, where he stayed and there was no turning back. Since then, he stayed in Suriname. He worked at Kerbalani for over 40 years. He was extremely proud of his job. And he was often a very quiet person, but also very dedicated to his work. I remember when we moved here to Suriname, and we used to visit him at Kirpalani. It was nice to get the behind the scenes of what was happening, because he would take us to the back elevator, and it, I probably would walk in the store and say, my nana works here, you know where he is? Uh, go get him, because he's gonna take us where he is right now. So he would come down, and he would show us his workplace, and he would show us his desk, he says, this is where I work, and go around all his colleagues and say, this is my granddaughter, and this is my grandson, they live here as well. And he felt really and truly proud. And he would tell us, you see those toys there? Go pick one. And he would say, go pick something, I'll get it for you. And I remember that from my childhood for him. In 1967, his family joined him in Suriname. And he truly was a family man. He was not much for parties or being social. He was a homebody. In the 70s, after his late in the late 70s, after his two daughters got married, he and his wife were separated. She went to India with her youngest daughter, and their son stayed with his father here in Suriname. And one fine day, their son, Raju, sometime in the early 80s, brought Cindy in his life. And they have been inseparable since then. That's how they met. Many people respected him and would often ask about him, my entire family, his family. And he did a lot of good deeds. And very recently I heard a story of him meeting a young man in Kirpalani itself who started working there. And this young man spoke to him in Hindi and he felt very happy about that when someone came up to him and spoke to him in Hindi. This young man later on met someone at Kirpalani who he got married to. They had a son. They had three sons and a daughter. And their eldest son is now my husband. So the circle of life. And today we share grandchildren. I have two kids who are his great grandchildren and that bond stayed alive for many, many years. So some fun facts about him. He was a foodie. I know my Nana, he absolutely loved food. And he had this amazing woman who always made such amazing food for him because I know that when I went over, whenever we would go over, there was always a feast in the house. I mean, it was just the four of us, but she cooked like there was no tomorrow. And I think for the first time in my life, I learned what bush up stuff, right, right? That, sorry, I said I get it right. And I saw her in the kitchen, like, you know, throwing this roti in the air. I'm like, what is she doing? Like, what is this, right? And, and I'm like, why are you beating up the roti? Like, 
is it supposed to be this way? And she's like, wait till you taste it. I'll never forget that day. And every time we had family get-togethers, whether it was his birthday or her birthday, it was always a fun time. And this was when he was living at the Tuberose Trap. We even stayed over there multiple times, and we've had some fun times with him. And let me tell you, he was, you know, during the week he would go to bed really early, like 8 p.m., man was in bed. Weekend comes, and he had a good Bollywood movie playing on TV. He was watching his movie. He knew all the stories of the TV series and what would happen next and what was going to go on. And I remember him telling her the stories because she was trying to understand Hindi. He was like, I don't know what's happening. He's like, don't worry, don't worry. I'll translate everything for you. And he would translate everything that was going on just so that she could join in and understand what was happening on TV. And I remember, and I shared this yesterday, that when I was not living in Suriname, and when we were growing up, we were living in the Philippines. My brother, by the way, was born in the Philippines. I was born in India. And he never forgot birthdays. He would send birthday cards to us every year. And he had the most colorful cards because he wrote in every color possible in that card. So I always look forward to that. And I heard that his favorite perfume was Yo, and in a recent walk, just after he passed, I felt like I was smelling that on the road while I was walking as if he was walking right next to, to me. 5.30 a.m. No joke, that's never happened before. And then I just thought to myself, it must be Nana, can't be anyone else. He did really good Donald Duck impressions. I don't know if you've ever heard from him, but he does it better than Donald Duck, by the way. He would do that for us as kids, and he did it for my children, and they absolutely loved it. And as I mentioned that every time I sat and spoke with him, he often spoke about the partition in India. That was just a memory that was very hurtful for him to have to leave his home and the things that he went through, his family went through at such a young age. And in all these years, when we were thinking, well, do we call him Barnana? Do my kids call him Barnana? But then I thought, well, why don't we add Super Nana? He was truly a Super Nana. And he was their great grandfather. And I'm so blessed that he was around to meet my children. And I want to go back now to the time when Super Nani here was with Nana and share a message from her. For 40 years, they lived a happy, loving, and progressive life together. Their devotion and care toward, towards each other was amazing and wonderful, and we are witness to all of that. They really and truly enjoyed each other's companionship. I haven't seen anyone who loved each other as much as they did. In 2011, Sydney received the saving grace of salvation and was converted to Jesus Christ, and he followed her strongly until he was also converted. And together, they worshipped in the church of the Nazarene till present. And thanks to the support of everyone at this church, um, they have really and truly been blessed to have you around in their life. So before I end today, I want to thank you, Nana, for everything. We will really miss you. So I want to end with a prayer. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace, love always, in the name of Jesus. And so, we keep learning more and more about Brother Ashwani, amen? We will now call upon the worship team that will lead us in a hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus.
laden, take it to the Lord in prayer. We will now open to anyone, church member, friends, and neighbor who would like to pay tribute.
ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਇਸ ਸਾਡੇ ਅਤੇ ਦੇ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਨੋ ਚੋਰੀ ਫੋਰ ਬ੍ਰਦਰ ਹੀਰ ਔਨ ਬੋਰਡ ਇਸ ਕਮ ਟੂ ਨ ਹੈਂਡ ਸੀਇੰਗ ਹਿਮ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਟ੍ਰੂ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਬਾਕਸ ਟ੍ਰੂ ਰੈਡ ਡੋਰ ਇਟ ਕਾਸ ਮੀ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਲਵ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ knowing every day every sunday when he and cindy comes in there this church is lighting up just to see them walk into that door but god has said one thing in his word <clears throat> when the light that he has blessed us with has gone we go back to him what is being remain has to be returned from the rich council and i thank god for knowing this superman a man that makes life pleasant a man that gives encouragement though he wasn't a, a man that speak out plenty he don't have so much word but his action gives us more of an inspiration to go on he knows the lord and that is what we are grateful for that he will live forever in the arms of the lord we thank god for him he has proven to us he is a truly child of god he was faithful when cindy every time cindy are uh, he going to act if we are not going to church right when the covid season was on he's going to question for so much and when he is looking that view that life starts on that hole no matter what comes his way his eyes will all this be fixed on the hole and he said he would not even ask for a sip of water his eyes fixed there he just eager to know the word of god and wants to know more about what life is all about i thank god for this character a proven to us all he has lived a full life serving god and holding on to his faith today whatever is remain here this will be the last of him in this world but he will continue to be in our hearts forever and he will live on and he will mark a point here in this foundation to know he was always here with us i want to say thank you cindy for allowing this character to come in our midst that we could have seen life that blooms out and then go down here in court but we know it's blooming in heaven thank god for him thank god for you god bless you thank you mr sales i will now call upon the worship team they will lead us in a hymn
Welcome. On behalf of myself and my family, our deepest and heartfelt condolences to Sister Cindy and everyone in the family, especially the closest his children and the grandchildren and all the family members. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. There are five promises I want to um, um, say what God is this morning out of many promises. God is always with me. He's always with us. We have no doubt in that. God is always good and is always good as always. We will not despair. God is always watching. I will not falter. God is always victorious. We shall not fall. Amen. God is always faithful in keeping his promise. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. This is a song which I wanted to sing about God's faithfulness. Faithful one, so unchanging. Faithful one, so unchanging. Ageless one, you're my
thing is life never stops. We can't stop right? We can't stop time. We can't stop nothing that happened. It happened, everything happened for a purpose. And God is with us. If you put your trust in God and our Lord Jesus Christ, He will strengthen you. He will give you the extra strength that you need to continue. So trust in the Lord and be in good, good courage because He is with us and He never leaves us. At the time that you think that it is hard and it is it's tough with you and you can't make it anymore, the Lord be with you and He take you through. He is the one that lift, lift us up of all our trouble. So be strong in the Lord and put your trust in Him. He will take you through each and every one of the family. I want to encourage you to be strong and continue to serve the Lord. Look, up, look unto Jesus. He is the finisher. He is the author and finisher of all our, all our problems. And He will take us through. I want to encourage everyone. Never give up. Don't give up. Anytime that you think that it is hard for you, look up to the Lord. He will be with you. I just want to give that little encouragement to everyone, especially Cindy and the rest of the family. Be blessed and take courage that God will be with you. Jesus Christ never leave us, never forsake us. Amen? Bless us. Thank you, Benerhe. Bless the good day to each one of us here today, my, on behalf of myself and my family, my sincere condolences to the family, the immediate family, loved ones, children, grandchildren, as my sister said, my brother was a family man with a lot of family. I would like to read a short verse, just two verses, I know we are limited by time. Second Timothy 4. 6 and 7. For I am all ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. These are the words of Paul. And the last verse has three parts of it. It says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. And the last phrase here, paragraph, is the most important. I have kept the faith. My brother has lived a long life. Many of us are dreaming or wishing to live those long years. But not only was it long, but was it effective. It was very effective. You see, the idea is not to live long. Many of us want long life, but how effective are we living our lives? How many persons are we influencing? How much are we helping? And as Paul says, he have kept the faith in the end. My brother, Brother Shawani, as my sister read the eulogy, he was a man traveling all over. And he was a very man of good, humble nature, kind, always giving. You see, you don't have to give someone something physical in your hand to say, I've given you something. You can give a person your time. You can give them your advice. And most of all, you can give them your love. See, when you give someone a material thing, maybe he don't appreciate it, he throws it away. But when you give them things of high consciousness, you put them to think. And I want to live the same life. You want to live the same life. Not only in numbers, but in effectiveness. And giving and loving like my dear brother. So let us all here be who is alive here. Let us listen and be like him. Try to pattern our life like him. Loving and caring. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you, Brother Mark. You know, normally when someone passes and you go to their funeral or you go to their wake houses, you will hear just good deeds about that person. And sometimes you might be sitting there knowing that person and thinking, where, did, where does all this come from? I, I knew this person. This is not something I know of this person, what I'm hearing here today. But you see, with Brother Ashwani, Everything we keep hearing throughout the few nights and today, each word is true. 
Brother Ashwani was truly a humble person, a loving person, and a kind person. Because he always had a smile on his face. I've been, we know him for 10 years now. And there isn't once we could say we saw him angry. He was always smiling. And he loved everyone. Everyone. From the time he entered, he would start shaking everyone's hand until he reached us in seat. And if he doesn't see anyone that he normally sees every week, he will ask for that person. Now, my husband and him, they have this little nickname for each other where they will call each other soldier. Brother Ashwani knew my name. He knew I am Sister Debbie. But yet when he, when he sees me he will, and he doesn't see my husband, he will ask, soldier wife, where is soldier? He knew I am Sister Debbie, but he seems to call me soldier wife. Amen. He was a great man indeed. And as I said before, his life is an inspiration to us all. Is there anyone else who would like to pay tribute? That will go back to the Lord. That, that do not have any work for God. 
that is just doing what Mary did. So just the soul is with God until God ready to make that back again in his time of the coming. And so I want to thank God and encourage my dear sister, encourage all the children of our dearest brother, son and her daughters and son-in-law, grandchildren and great grands everyone, his wife, I want to encourage you, knowing Christ, believing in him and trusting him and serving him, you will have that same joy within you. You know, it's, I, do, I have to give up, but it reminds me of my father, he's 92. My father passed away in 92. He was 92 and I give up. Thank you. We will now go into our second scripture reading and I will call upon Sister Janet. Praise the Lord. Good day everyone. Our scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, starting reading from verse 50 to 15. It says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inher inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, for this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the Lord, is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sister Janet. We will now call on Reverend William Macbord. He has a few words for us. I'd like to express my sympathy to the family and just want to share just this incident in the Bible that's similar to what we're experiencing right now. And it's from John chapter 11 when Mary and Martha experienced the death of their brother Lazarus. And as they were weeping and mourning, it was Mary who said to Jesus, Martha's first met him and said, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And then Jesus said unto him that your brother will rise again. And Martha said he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whosoever lives and believes in me will never die. Those are some of the most powerful words in scripture because it tells us of the transition that we all will go through with the belief that we have in Christ. He being the resurrection and the life. So our brother is just in transition. Because although he may, we may see him dead, 
yet he lives. And he lives in Christ who lives in him. So take comfort that he's also alive within our hearts and within our lives. May God bless you and grant you comfort. Thank you, Reverend Mark Bart. We will now call upon our worship team that will lead us in a hymn. When we all get to heaven. Jeremiah.
To carry 91 years of age is a good thing. 92? Will it be 92 next month? Yes, but to carry that age with the Lord in your life is a blessing. Amen? We know where our brother will be. We have that blessed hope that one day we will see him again. Now I know you might be thinking, thinking this is a long funeral service, but our dear brother was a very loved and kind person. He was a very humble person. He, he was the eldest member of our church. And this is the last we could do for him. To send him off with great honor. Amen? So bear with us a little more. We will now go into our message. I will call upon Reverend Sahih Muhammad. And he will bring the message for us. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you for the worship team and all those who took part in the service. The kind words. First of all, let me say our condolences to the family, friends of our dear loved one, Brother Sundar Swani. From God's word this morning, we read, I'm going to repeat it. Jesus was speaking and he said, In my father's house are many mansions. If, if it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Where I am going, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. A great man, James Ockley, he said, Death to the Christian is the funeral of all his sorrows and evil. That means those are gone. And it is resurrection. The resurrection of all of his joys and hope. As Christians, we know that death is a transitioning into eternity of our God. And God has promised those who remain behind to ease our burdens and heal our pain. Our Father, we thank you today for your holy word. And our prayer even right now is that you will bring comfort and solace to the hearts of all of us who mourn the loss of our dear brother. During these next few minutes, maybe two hours at the most, God, our final tribute of respect to the one who was born, to the one who we look up to, the one whom we admire for his courage and faith, we ask you, O God, that we will receive strength from you as we go through these final moments with him. Bless each and every one we pray in Jesus' name. Bless your word now to our hearts and minister to us as we wait upon you. We thank you, Lord, today. Amen. I want to share with you briefly, I'll take a few minutes, about calming troubled hearts with trust and hope in Jesus. First of all, let me say, immortality is man's heritage from the Creator. We are immortal because God created us with immortality. God's breath has transformed man from dust into an immortal being. And God's gift to us is a seal of an inheritance, an existence that will never cease. So, whether you believe it or not, you are immortal. The real you cannot die. The body dies. Adam's life in the Garden of Eden appears to have been supported 
by his relationship with God. He lost those supernatural means of support when he, which he had enjoyed before, especially with the tree of life. And as long as Adam and Eve were sinless, they had access to the tree of life, and death, even for the body, had no power over them. It was only when they sinned that death to the body occurred. Life is perpetual. It has no end. The body can be destroyed, but the soul lives on. The problem then is, where will you spend eternity? When our 92 years come, I hope I can go there. When our three score and ten comes, however much we have, and we give up this body, where will we spend eternity? Now one may live according to their heart, their desire, what they see, but they should never think that their own heart or their own eyes will be their judge. There is a God in heaven who will bring all of life and all of our works into judgment. We have that appointment from which no one can escape. And that appointment is with God. This is one of the reasons why there is so much fear of death. Because we are scared to approach God with whom we may have had no relationship, with whom we have developed a relationship, with whom we have able, been able to serve because of our focus of life have been on different things. Every one of us have that thinking, intelligent, conscious state within us, what we call a being, which we call the soul. And this survived the destruction of the body and will live forever. And Jesus tells us of a life that is to be abundant. That spiritual life in us influences our consciousness, our thoughts, our desires, our purposes, our acts and habits. And this is what helps us to form character which will determine our destiny, where we will spend eternity in the future world. Every one of us has an awareness and a longing for the eternal. God has put eternity within our hearts because we are made in the image of God. An eternal God. He keeps that yearning within us. That yearning is always alive in the heart of mankind. As a yearning yet to be fulfilled. Augustine confession was, You have made us for yourself. And our hearts are restless until they can find peace in you. So the human heart is restless until we experience that relationship with our God and find peace with Him. Christ entered this world as a human not to take away life, but to take death away from the Spirit. Man is trying in his own way to find God. Thomas made a confession in that scripture that we read. He said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? We don't know the way. Jesus said, I am the way. You see, religion is man's search for God. And there are hundreds of religions. And there are thousands of religious groups. And even outside of religion, man is still trying to search for God. In fact, the goal of mankind all over the world, regardless of who we are, is to find a way back to God as a reconciled child. As someone who can experience a relationship with the Father. Because we recognize our separation from God. Man is searching. And sometimes he's trying and trying all the wrong ways to meet back with your maker. They spend their life doing things that will not take them or give them a good relationship with God. They hope that their works and their contributions and whatever else they do will find acceptance with God. But this is not always the case. But we thank God that we read in John chapter 14 from verse 1 through 6 that Jesus is the way back to God. 
Man has drifted so far from God that he needs help from him. And that's why we read in this verse that God has provided a way for us to be reconciled with him. Jesus came as God's promised Messiah. He taught us about God's kingdom and about the, our sinfulness. He was crucified in our place on that cruel cross. He is the way back to God. A way of love and forgiveness. A way of grace and holiness. So Jesus said he is the way. We didn't stop there. He said he is the truth. And God is providing truth in his word for us to be reconciled to him. The Bible is God's word outlining the plan of salvation for every single one of us. God's word is his guideline for a meaningful relationship with him. The Bible tells us about the holiness of God, the sinfulness of man, God's love for mankind, Jesus paying the price for our sins, how we can receive forgiveness, how we can receive pardon, how we can become children of God and have this hope of everlasting life. So that when our time comes and we are laying here, our family and our friends and our church and the church that will gather around us like today, will have that assurance to know, like all of us have been saying on me, that he has gone to a better place. And he is in the arms of the Lord. The teachings of Jesus, these truths from the Lord God's word, are necessary for man's reconciliation with the maker. I would like to call my wife now and she will read a poem for us. Come and the 
great crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. God bless you. by Myra Brooks Welsh. God has offered eternal life for those who accepted him. So when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he meant that those who will allow him to touch their lives, he is the master. And even though we may struggle and go through life, bruised and battered, almost useless, like that old violin covered in dust. Just one touch of the Master's hand in our life. Jesus said in his word, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Life in itself can be like an old violin sitting that morning not even valued at three dollars but just one touch of the master's hand brings life and light and for each and every one of us when christ spoke of eternal life when he spoke about life he is the life he was thinking of one not of quality not of quantity but of quality he was thinking what it means to really live the quality of our life eternal life is the difference between mere existence physically and living in the realm of the spirit it is in the realm of the spirit that we have the gifts and the graces that enables, it enables us to experience abundance of life he was thinking of a life so full and deep and blissful that time is of no essence. Christ has deepened and brightened the immortality that we have born with into the abundance of life that he has spoken about so well in John chapter 10. He has brought back beauty and glory to our walk with God. Paul indicated that Christ is a source of this newness of life. We are touched by his love. We are awakened by his call into a glorious walk with him into that life abundantly. Paul said, you and he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. It is by the spiritual life that we receive from Christ that we can have today the hope of glory. Jesus has shown us the way back to God. He is the way. It's a narrow way. It's a way of holiness and righteousness. He is the truth. The word of God affirmed this. And our lives testify that God's word is true. He is life. It is only when we have life in Jesus, the eternal life, that we can have this hope of heaven today. So Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Our dear brother has been received by the Lord. And every one of us ought to have this hope. Just allow him to be the one who is able to touch your life with the master's hand. To transform it and change it into abundance of life. May God bless you this day as we say our farewell to our dear brother we know where he's going but let's get our lives in order stand with me as we pray
Our Father, we thank you today for your mercies and your grace, your love and your goodness. We thank you for the 92 years that our brother has been upon this earth. And from what we have heard today and in the few days before, in all the tributes and especially in the eulogy, he has touched many lives of all life paths. He has brightened the life of many people. And we trust that our own lives will also be able to reach others and touch someone. But we know that you, O oh Lord, is just waiting for us to be touched by your wonderful hands. So today I pray that you will touch every soul in your presence right now. Let the touch of the Master's hand be upon our lives to train, change and transform us so that we can experience this abundance of life that you have spoken about. So that we can have this right relationship with you. So that we can walk in this newness of life filled with your grace, your gifts and your glory. Bless your people today. I pray, Lord, for the family right now. I cover Sister Cindy, I cover the children, the dear families, and extended family members, and the children, grandchildren, and everyone, oh God, all the friends and the people of this church. Oh God, I cover under the precious blood of Jesus today. And I thank you for the comfort you have given us from your holy word that assures us of your presence with us even in the valley of the shadow of death. And this is what we are experiencing today. We are walking the valley of the shadow of death because it is only a shadow. It cannot harm us. Death has no more sting for the Christian. The grave has no more victory for the Christian. No grave will hold or bond down. So we ask you today to be with us as we walk this path. Be with the children today as they walk this path. Be with Jesus today as you walk this path. Everyone, Lord, right now, let your divine strength, let your everlasting arms encircle us. And keep us, Lord, in the center of your will. Thank you, Father, for being there for us and for the family at such a time as this. We honor you, glorify you, praise your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we pray to have given today. Amen and amen. We have come to the end of this funeral service at the church. You can be seated, please. And again, we want to thank you for coming on behalf of Sister Cindy and the children and grandchildren, the family members. I want to thank you for coming. I don't know if any one of them would like to say anything at this time, but we really appreciate having the family here with our dear brother at this time. And as we come to a close, if you would like to view, you can walk on my right and come around here and then turn back and go back to your seat. Thank you so much and the Lord bless you. And from here after that, we will be moving on to the crematory. Let me call on the worship team again and they will maybe sing a hymn while we doing this.
अपने पाप से हमको प्रभु जी जीवन के हर पल में संभार प्रभु जी जीवन के हर पल में
does it better than Donald Duck. And thanks to him, um, my kids also get to, got to know him. He did this for all his grandchildren. And he would make all these impersonations. He knew exactly how to connect with them. He really and truly connected with him. Whenever I sat with him, he would often repeat that one story. You know that, you know, when it comes to grandparents, they have that one story they will repeat over and over and over again. For him, it was the, the partition. And I got to know a little bit more about the partition because through his experience, that was his story. That was something that he often shared. And I can see it was pretty hurtful for him. And as for Super Nanny and Super Nana, they lived a very happy life together. They really took care of each other, and I can honestly say that she really took care of him. He was always surrounded by his children, his grandchildren. He had a real connection with everyone in the family, and I don't think I've ever seen him upset or angry. In fact, he was always smiling and joking. Uh, or saying something funny because he was always trying to connect with everyone. So Nana, thank you for everything. On behalf of all your children, on behalf of all your grandchildren, and anyone who couldn't make it here today, they're all, they're all thinking of you, they're all with you, and we know you're all with us. We're going to miss you so much, Nana. Super Nana. Your soul rest in peace. And at this point, I want to call someone who started a bond with him many, many years ago. And I say life is full circle because there was a young man who started working at Kirpanani who met with my grandfather. And apparently, he was very impressed with this young man because he spoke to him in Hindi. And he felt very proud about that. Someone came to me and spoke to me in Hindi, and I really really like that. That young man got married, had four children, the eldest one was standing right next to me here, and who is now my loving husband. They shared a bond for many, many, many years to come, even after the days of Kirpalani, and I would have never imagined how we would all be connected in this way, and that they have the same one. He threatened great grandchildren and of course his grandchildren. And I want to invite this young man to say a few words and sing a little something for him. Please welcome.
पीछे आज अच्छा पोषित की तो मनीर जो लोग थे वो हम लोग के आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं एक उन तरह हम आओगे नमस्ते नमस्ते नेशनल जी उन्होंने हमको बहुत अच्छा से देखा गौर से हो गया मिस्टर रामदास के पास से कहा कि एक लड़का है जो बहुत अच्छा बात करता है इसको सेल्स बताओ धीरे धीरे इसे एक बंधन हो गया उसका और वहाँ से हमारे जिंदगी में हम दस को हम स्कूल जाते रहे तो दाते फैदर बैठ कर आप उसे आठवीं से बताए बोले कहीं ना रात के स्कूल जाए हम क्या बोला उनको कौन से स्कूल आप स्कूल और बच्चे सुन गया मार है हर आउट एक कनेक्शन बन जब काम करिए जब भी कुछ करिए सच्चाई से ईमानदारी से कम धीरे से बोलते थे पर जो भी बोलते थे गौर करना था और उसका जो एक मुखड़ा था हंसने का और उसका ह्यूमर जो था थोड़ा से मुस्कुरा करके कुछ ऐसा बात कर देने का जिसमें कुछ ह्यूमर था और कुछ लॉजिक भी था एक भजन गा कर मैं एक छोटी सी वाक्य बताऊंगा उससे पहले कविता आगाह अपनी जिंदगी से कोई बशर नहीं सामान सौ बरस की और पल की खबर नहीं जीवन खत्म हुआ तो जीने का ढंग आया जब छम क्षमा बुझ गई तो महफिल का रंग आया फुर्सत के वक्त में ना सुमिरन का वक्त निकला उस वक्त वक्त माना जब वक्त तंग आया जीवन खत्म हुआ तो जीने का ढंग आया इसके बाद हम लोग मिलकर एक भजन गाएंगे आज अंधेरे में है हम इंसान आज अंधेरे में है हम इंसान ज्ञान का सूरज चमका दे Saint Crane, Dinners, the Wadi Wake of Angel of Vita, 
में और ये वाक जो आज भी यहां पर मौत तो आनी है आएंगी आज नहीं तो कल अपनी आवान ले जाएगी आज नहीं तो कल मौत तो आनी है आएगी आज नहीं तो कल अपनी अमानत ले जाएगी आज नहीं तो कल तान के सीना चलने वाले सुन लो मेरी बात तेरी पतंग भी कट जाएगी आज नहीं तो कल देख बुढ़ापा क्यों तू रोए हंसते जी भर आज तेरी जवानी ढल जाएगी आज नहीं तो कल आज भी मुसाफिर है आता है जाता है जाते हुए सब अपना ही जिंदगी का सफर है एक ऐसा सफर कोई समझा नहीं कोई जाना नहीं मैं यहाँ से अपने परिवार को से फिर वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग वूमन एंड वेरी डेडिकेटेड वूमन नानी जी आई नो हर फॉर लॉन्ग From the beginning, I, I can say very big, very strong woman, a super woman. If she was a super nana, she was a super woman. I wish you a, a very much. Uh, I think you can work it out positively too, as he teach me to be positive. Go along. You did well. You people like you make people live longer health. Thank you very much. फिर से हाथ जोड़ दे तुम ही हो माता पिता तुम ही हो तुम ही हो बंधु सखा तुम ही हो तुम ही हो माता पिता तुम ही हो तुम ही हो बंधु सखा तुम ही हो तुम ही हो साथी तुम ही
Good afternoon to all. And our deepest condolences to each one of you. And this will be the last of what we will see for our dear beloved. And right now I will call uh, Mr. Devi to take the mic.
We are all here to embrace you. Thank you for the marvelous job you have done and setting that example for us all. God bless you.
is not in vain. And St. John, in the book of Revelation, wrote these words, he said, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors, for their deeds will follow them. At this time, I thought upon one of our guests who has been visiting us this past week, and he has been a friend to the people in Suriname, former chaplain in the U.S. Army, retired and now was left in the covenant, and continued to minister around the world. We'll ask him to say the closing benediction on our dear professional. Perfect.
up to the earth and the soul of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and thank you.
शांति रे दी ओम शांति 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 Stays here with you, right? May your soul rest in peace, my dear brother. Yes, my dear brother. Give us help and strength. Yes, sir. You're angry. Why are you angry? No, I'm not so angry. 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 
body number, right? So I have your head. Hare Hare, 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 H
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे
Yeah.